Alyssa, our next story, I have to tell you, it baffles me. I can't wait to get your insight on it. It's a woman who has multiple orgasms that she cannot control. What's going on? Can this really happen? Let's look at her story. I was 21 and newly married and in my third month of pregnancy when I woke one morning to these really strong sensations. In order to get any kind of relief, I would have to masturbate and have three consecutive orgasms in order to go on with my day. It was like something was controlling me. I thought I was feeling the sensations because of pregnancy hormones. I called my OBGYN and she was a little baffled by it too. I feared that after I had the baby, the sensations would still be there and my fears came true. By the time my son was two, I was having the sexual sensations in the morning, in the afternoon, and then again at night. At this point, most of my day was spent masturbating and I would actually be crying while I was doing it. When she told me, I really didn't know how to react. I'd never really heard of anything like this. Because of this condition, I have had to give up a lot of things. I didn't hang out with my friends anymore. I didn't go to church anymore. I just basically lived at home and suffered. Traveling is pure torture. The vibrations of a car would make my sensations unbearable, and I even had to resort to pleasuring myself in the back of our family van. It really affected my sex life with my husband because I didn't want to have sex because I knew that after sex was over, I was going to have to be pleasuring myself, and just made me feel really dirty and freakish. And I voluntarily put myself into two different psychiatric wards because it drove me to the point of being suicidal. Is there a medical solution to this problem? Lisa will try to solve this medical mystery when we come back. Coming up. Red is like uh, red hot metal, and the white is like wet, white hot metal, which is much hotter. And later. I woke one morning to these really strong sensations. In order to get any kind of relief, I would have to masturbate and have three consecutive orgasms in order to go on with my day. By the time my son was two, I was having the sexual sensations in the morning, in the afternoon, and then again at night. Up to 15 orgasms a day. That sounds pretty great, right? Well, actually, for our next guest, Heather, it's a living nightmare. Basically, this is a disorder called persistent genital, genital arousal disorder. And a lot of people can have this. And Heather is here today to tell us about that disorder. And thank you so much for being here. Sure, thank you for having me. So, so tell me, exactly what happens when you experience this? Um, out of nowhere, at, with no um, you know, thoughts in my mind and no emotions that um, have to do with anything sexual, mm -hmm. all of a sudden within my uh, clitoris will, uh, I'll have these sensations that, that feel like sexual stimulation. So you can be walking, you can be working, you can be at home cleaning the house. Exactly. And all of a sudden you feel aroused. Right. Okay. And then what happens? Um, they build, they increase um, until it's completely distracting. And I um, will have to relieve myself through masturbation. Now how long has this been going on? This has been going on for almost 14 years. It's really stolen my life from me. Um, I have. I used to have a social life and I became quite a hermit because of this. Um, even little things like going to the grocery store, you know, became really awful because being in a car would make the problem even worse. It affected my sex life with my husband. And your husband's here yes, today, he's here. Jeremy? Hi. And and how did this how do how do you feel this affected your relationship? Um, pretty much in every way, you know. Any affection I wanted to show had to be based upon if she was able to receive it at that time. So, I mean, even just on an, in our relationship on an emotional level, you know, it was tough because, you know, you 
you love someone and you want to show that, but you're not always free to do that. So it put a lot of restrictions yes. on yes. when you could, you could have sex. Now, other doctors, have they, what have they told you about this disorder? Um, I've seen many different doctors. Um, at, for, for seven years, when I, um, I thought I was the only woman in the entire world who had this problem, um, all the doctors had never heard of it, and they wanted to say things like I had obsessive compulsive disorder, or um, you know, some of them just completely wrote me off, that you know, it was just all in my head, and maybe I was sexually, you know, I, I hadn't experimented enough or had enough sexual encounters. And, they didn't um, believe you. Yeah, they didn't believe me. And, and we have with us Dr. Kamasarek. And thank you for being here today. And you have actually been doing research in this area for two years now? Well, uh, in uh, human sexuality for about 25 years. Okay. And uh, the PGAD symptom, symptoms uh, for about two years. Excellent. And, and you feel imaging. that there's a real um, brain origination, or you can depict it in the brain. What we are finding is that uh, there is uh, activity, unusually uh, extensive activity in the genital sensory areas of the brain and other areas mm -hmm. that uh, could be related to the symptoms. And I think we have a, a graphic that, yes. that shows um, what you've been depicting. <clears throat> uh, this is a, uh, a functional MRI of uh, a woman who uh, is, does not have the PGA d, uh, d symptoms. Uh, she's symptom free, and this is an area where the uh, when she thinks about her genital sensory input, uh, her genital sensations. This is the area that becomes activated. Uh, this is a woman. And what area is that? Th this is the sensory cortex. It's called. It's the. It's a sensory cortex that is in the genital sensory region. The body is mapped. Uh, the whole body is mapped on the sensory cortex, and this is a, a very specific region. But as you can see, the area uh, in a woman who has PGAD symptoms is much more extensive. And I think the next slide shows a uh, comparison. The red is like uh, red hot metal, and the white is like wet, white hot metal, which is much hotter. So this is not only is the area much more extensive, much larger, uh, in the woman with uh, PGAD symptoms, mm -hmm. but uh, it's also a uh, much more intense activity. For what, so the, for the women with persist, persistent genital arousal disorder, they're going to have a heightened sensory in that area. Right, but not only in that area, it ex it's more extensive. Uh, and uh, this is an area, it impinges on an area that uh, is act normally activated by itch. And a number of women with the symptoms of PGAD say that they, have, they feel like they have an itch that they can't get access to, they can't scratch it. The, this is an area that normally responds to pain input. This is the insula. So the woman with uh, PGAD symptoms also has an activation of the pain area. And this is an area that normally responds to actual sensory input. This is a, a sensory relay area in the thalamus. Now both of these women are just thinking about the genital sensory activity. They're not, uh, they're not actually doing any stimulation. So there's extensive activity in the women with PGAD activity. So what you're telling us and what you're reassuring Heather is that this is real. PGAD yeah. is real. This yeah. is not just in her head. Uh, PGAD symptoms, it's activity that's really happening in the brain, but we don't know what the cause is. We don't know whether it's a, a, a caused by some peripheral injury or nerve damage or brain problem, uh, neurochemical uh, imbalance. Uh, there could be many causes of it, such as uh, there are many causes of headache. I looked at your medical records, Heather, and, and you've let us discuss that here today. Would anything like uh, she had scoliosis mm -hmm. do something like that or any other sort of spinal... It, that's another possibility, that the scoliosis could put pressure on the spinal cord, that could put pressure on the nerves. There could be many causes. Now, is there a treatment, a cure? There, uh, just like, as in headache, there are many different treatments. Uh, it's very idiosyncratic. Different people have different responses. There are different causes for, for headache, different treatments for headache. And uh, similarly, there are various treatments that have been effective, that have been described as effective for PGAD. There are antidepressants, uh, anti-pain uh, medication, 
uh, even anti-seizure medications. These have been shown in various women, but not everybody, to work. And massage, uh, meditation, uh, all kinds of uh, different treatments. Until we have a rational basis to understand PGAD, it just requires trying all different things to see what works and what doesn't work. It's going to be different for everybody. Medicine's not perfect, it's an art. <laughs>